So I just posted my last video about Beyond the Fall and this role-playing game that I'm trying to create. And I was actually very surprised when I got a lot of different people very interested in it. And the only problem with that is that I haven't put all of the rules into like a full text that you can read. It's kind of a thousand notes all over the place, so I can't actually send that out yet. And in my last video, I kind of rambled on about all of these different ideas and things that will be in the game and what I want from the game and all of these different stories I'm trying to tell. And I mentioned some stories that I ran through with my friends and people that haven't played role-playing games before, but I never really went into them. And so today I want to run through the story of one of my role-playing sessions. It's not incredibly long, so don't worry. But this is the story of Bonnie Doon and Clarice and their adventures behind the walls. And so we're sitting by a lake it's nighttime. There's a campfire in between us, and we can hear the water breaking on the shore. I only brought two D6 with me, so that was gonna have to do. And I started with the same thing that I always wish I could start a role-playing game with. What are your names? I was running this game for my older brother and his girlfriend, and in the past I've talked about how I've tried to get them into playing these lighter role-playing games, because they're not the people that would want to jump into playing something like Dungeons & Dragons, where they open all these books and have to run through all this. But they've always been sort of interested in how these games work, so I offered to run it for them. And so I asked them their names. Bonnie Doon and Clarice. Second, I asked them what they do in the world. What is their purpose? What is their job? What do they like to do? Bonnie Doon responded that he's a tech scavenger. He, he grabs old computer parts and tries to sell them on a sort of black market. Clarice responded that she hates kids, but she's a camp counselor. So her backpack is filled with granola bars and bottles of water, uh, suntan lotion, and I think a bandana. Bonnie Doon has pockets full of old Commodore cartridges and RAM sticks. Was this gonna help them anywhere in the future? They don't know, and I don't either. They're gonna have to get creative. So the third thing I asked them is, how did they meet? How did they come to this very point on the street? Apparently, Bonnie Doon was walking with his coffee. He turned a corner and ran into Clarice. He spilled some coffee on her nice, flower jumper. They walked into the hotel looking for a bathroom so they could wash out the stain. While they were there, Bonnie Doon sits at the bar and inquires about the Help Wanted sign out front. With the metal mechanical man pouring him a glass of whiskey on the rocks, he's curious as to what lay beyond this simple bar, the fall. What lay above him in this hotel and what other wonders could perhaps be there. The bartender introduces himself as Durain. If they want this job, they have to accept it unknowing. And with nothing better to do on this fine Tuesday night, they do. Durain shows them the one-way message blinking on his terminal in the lobby. Bright green text blinks on the black background. There's a rat problem on floor four. Go sort it out. The elevator doors open, and you find that the walls and floors of floor four are a bit scratched up. The matted red carpet is tattered, and the wallpaper with intricate red designs have small claw marks in it. A bright fluorescent light pours from one of the hotel rooms on the right side. Both Bonnie Doon and Clarice were a bit anxious in this dark and forbidding hallway, but they enter into the light. When they get in, they find that all of the furniture in this room has been pushed up against the walls and standing right in the center, no, floating in the center of the room, tethered to the ceiling by metal cords and wires, is a terminal. A computer screen holding in one small pincer a fly swat. This old Zon 64, a hobby computer from 1973, is flickering around, looking at all the ground, trying to find something. And when you walk in, it holds the fly swatter towards you. When it finally realizes that you must be the one sent to help, 
It ushers you towards it. It shushes you with green text flickering across its screen as you try to explain and it ushers you into the double doors in the back of the hotel room. Both Bonnie Dune and Clarice are now confused, but they follow it. This is their job and they want to make coin. And so they follow him into the back where they find the bed on its side pushed up against the wall. And all the pillows and cushions are set up in this vertical building, a sort of telephone box in the corner of the room. The terminal slowly moves into them, into its small cocoon of soundproofing he's created for himself and ushers you towards him once again. The terminal whispers to Bonnie Dune and Clarice who hesitantly lean in. They're in the walls, he says. Can't you hear them? Eventually Bonnie Dune tries this. He puts his ear up to the wall on the other side and the computer comes out with him. They both put their ears to the wall and Bonnie Dune hears nothing. The computer acts as if as if you now know, as if you now understand the trouble he's been going through. Since they are now fully in this job, the terminal reasons that they can get into the walls, they can exterminate the rats for him. All they have to do is go down to room 7B. The bathroom's already being remodeled, so they might as well just go right through one of the walls that's already stripped down to studs. Once they are there, they can find the rats and they can expel them. Without much reservation, Bonnie Dune and Clarice agree to this. They go down to room 7B out of the terminal's sight. Walking into this hotel room, it's obviously under construction by one much smaller terminal. Coming up from the floor this time, he seems to not all be there. He's trying to react to what they're doing, but a couple minutes after they do it. It doesn't talk any, it just merely follows them around. They see the bathroom, they see the tub, and they realize that behind it they could break down this drywall and get in behind the wall to go find these rats. But Bonnie Dune asks Clarice something. He, he doubts the terminal. He, he whispers quietly so the other one in this room can't hear them just in case. He says, maybe floor four's terminal isn't all there. I didn't hear anything in that wall. I think, I think he's going a bit crazy. And so Bonnie Dune pulls his sword and they walk back defensively. They walk back to the first room on the floor where the terminal originally was. They walk by all of the upturned furniture and into that small cushioned telephone booth of a room. And they find the terminal, face to the wall, still listening perhaps. Bunny Dune walks up and creaks it back to facing him and he sees it, scratches across the screen of the once alive terminal, now dark and silent. He moves it out of the way behind it. Through its ripped apart cushions, there's a hole in the wall. The tables have now turned. Clarice puts her head into the four foot high hole in the wall and sees that there's much more space behind their walls than there should be, about two and a half feet. They could walk comfortably, sidestepping of course, down this hallway, down this passage in between the walls. And so they both step into the hole and they follow the bits of wallpaper and stuffing foam from all the cushions down this small thin passageway. Eventually sidestepping along, holding a sword in hand, Bonnie Dune sees light, a flickering flame-like light coming from a hole in the wall five feet off. They talk for a second. Clarice holds a grenade in hand. They both dip their head in front of the door, and Bonnie Dune walks in, his sword in hand, and they see it. They come through the hole in the wall, and they find themselves in a sort of older hotel room, one that still decorates itself with the old 70s renovation wallpaper and carpet. But something else has taken up living here. In the center of the room, there's a large wooden space Spool. Now lacking any wire around it, it sits with four candles melting on top of it. Now in the center is a piece of paper or cloth, something with markings drawn all over it. But they see eyes. With the light flickering along the sides of the walls, they see three different figures. The fire from the candles illuminates these three creatures that are about three and a half feet tall and have faces and paws like that of 
rats. One has a small tattered hats and shorts and he holds up a gun, very cobbled together towards Bonnie. The other two have a variation of a small shirt or small shorts on, tattered from years past. They seem to understand what Bonnie and Clarice are trying to say, trying to talk their way out of this gun versus sword fight. But they don't speak back. They chitter amongst themselves as if they can't actually speak until one of them drags over an older console, one with a screen that's dusty and a keyboard that's well-worn, and he starts typing back responding back to what the two of them are trying to negotiate. After a tense back and forth, they start to explain to you. They realize you're not as hostile as you might be. And Bonnie Doon and Clarice are feeling sort of bad for these rats hidden in the walls. They start to understand where they're coming from, what their hardships are. And the rats explain to them this sheet of paper that they have in the center, a map, a cross section of the hotel. The floor is cut off at the top and at the bottom, but in the center, there's a place where they have spliced the sheet. In between floors two and three, they have made a section and added another sheet of paper behind it, taped over it with scotch tape to show this is something. They have different scratchings and red ink and black ink pointing to this. And Clarice understands. She finds that they're looking for somewhere that they don't have to live in the walls. And if, if perhaps they are right, that there might be another floor. She asks them this, and they say, yes. They believe that the elevator takes longer to get from floor two to floor three than any other floor. There must be something in between there somewhere they could stay. Now this wasn't the job they were expected to do, but they talk amongst themselves and they think this could be it. Two jobs in one, they could get the rats where they needed to be, and by technicality, they're not in the walls anymore, they're exterminated. And so Bonnie Doon and Clarice take this job. They accept after winning the favor over by giving them some scrap metal and parts that Bonnie Doon has had for quite a while. But there's one problem. The rats won't go there alone. They're scared of what might lie there in the darkness. Besides, the terminals can't see them leave. Bonnie Doon and Clarice need to find some way to get them there. So they go to scout it out. They ask the small elevator robot if he will take them in between floors to floor 2.5 and he does not understand. He also refuses to let them use the big lever that brings you up and down. And so they simply pick him up and place him outside of the elevator. They get in, they close the doors, they pull the elevator, and it shoots downwards. On their second try, they stop it right in between floors where there was somewhat of a gap of time. The elevator doors open into pitch darkness. Clarice was a camp counselor, so she puts on a headlamp. Illuminating the darkness of floor 2.5, they see this gaudy 70s carpet and 70s wallpaper designs that are untouched, nice yet dusty. They walk down the hallway in silence, and then Bonnie Doon runs into something, something hanging from the ceiling. As Clarice puts her light on it, they see it's another terminal, but this one older, a Zonware 32. Much like the computer that the rats had scavenged at some point in time and were typing back to them on, but this one hung from the ceiling attached still to one of its terminal ports. A thin plastic sheet still over its screen. It's brand new yet dusty. Moving around it, they hear something quiet footprints on carpet. Breaking the silence, metal screeching amongst itself, quietly, quietly ticking. It seems they are not alone. There's something else here. There's something walking amongst the floor. This long forgotten place perhaps was found by something else first and they hear its soft steps on the carpet coming towards them. 
and then they see its eyes. Something has found them. Perhaps the rats were not living here for a reason. Perhaps they sent you because something else was taking up residence. They see its eyes first, glowing green in the darkness, and then coming into view, this metal monstrosity, a juggernaut of sorts with twisting pipes all along its body in the form of some sort of human. It runs down the hallway towards them, human feet, quiet on the soft carpet. And so Bonnie Doon wields his sword once more, and Clarice pulls the pin on the only grenade that they have left. The game that I am trying to create is one that encourages stories like this, stories that are so wild and open that you can go anywhere with them. You still have this framework, this, this building of ideas inside of this hotel, but within such, you can do anything. And I wanted to transport people to a different world, one that's not medieval fantasy. And so for all the people that really wanted to understand what I was trying to do with this game, this is it. It's these stories, not the dice rolls, not the mechanics, it's the stories that it will create. Now this game isn't finished, in fact it's far from it, so if you're interested in this kind of stuff, in this new world, in just role-playing games in general, and perhaps creating new ones, if you want to get some of the rules whenever they come out, if you want to help out, if you want to write adventures, or if you just want to know more about the world, this whole video is just to give an idea, a taste of what I'm working on. And so if you're interested, please check out the links. If you want to follow me on Twitter, I post a lot of stuff on there. A lot of things about models, but also stuff about this game and where it's going. And if you want to keep getting updates about all of this, subscribe to me on YouTube, ring the bell so you'll actually see some of the stuff, and comment. If you like this, comment about what you liked about it. If you thought it was a little bit ridiculous and too out there, then tell me that. But thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this little story time. Have a good night and play some fun games. Play whatever you want, in any way you want, with any people, and make it a little bit ridiculous, because those are all the most fun. Thanks so much for watching. Have a good night.